In my last video, I talked about a full IK toolset for Animate CC, but I really didn't show it. So today I want to walk through a full rigging demo and talk about the main tools in the IK rigging toolbox. Flash Power Tools allows you to create smart magnet rigs in puppet animation. Puppet animation is one style of animation that allows the artist to get a lot more use out of the original artwork than with traditional animation. In my mind, the gold standard of puppet animation is the animated series, The Wildcrafts. That TV series makes such excellent use and reuse of the art assets. Many of the videos that I've done to this point are really celebrating what the tool can do because this tool has been wonderfully documented. The documentation that's there is really thorough my effort in putting together this demo is really just to highlight some of the trickier points of getting this tool to work with your rig. So I'll be offering my insights and my tips and tricks on how to use this tool the very, very best way for some of the things that you might be doing, especially with humanoid rigs. At this point, there's lots of really good tutorials out there about rigging, about animation, animation tips. But I think that with humanoid rigs, which are incredibly complex. We could always use another take on how to build a humanoid rig in a way that's smart, that's efficient, that doesn't you know, take too long. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So getting started with the rigging, of course, means having the plugin already installed. One of the next most important things to do is to set up the EDAP keyboard shortcut. And you can access the keyboard shortcut from the preferences menu. One very, very important step that I need to mention, the registration point that is normally in the upper left of your symbol is going to need to be moved where your symbol is going to rotate. You'll need to do this for each of your symbols. Step one is to move the pivot point to the logical point where that symbol will need to rotate. Step two is to hit control T and that will move this little plus sign, this registration point and pop it to the same point as that pivot point. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the next steps of the rigging. So I've prepared a generic model ahead of time and I've already moved the pivot points on each of the symbols so I can concentrate on the next steps of the rigging process. We'll need to set up center markers and magnet targets. This is another step that's pretty repetitive so I'm gonna speed it up on the video but you'll notice that in each of the symbols, and I've left my little timeline window on so you can see both which symbol I'm, I'm accessing and what's happening in the timeline. The center marker and the magnet targets are going to be created for you automatically when you press Shift tilde and alternately Alt tilde. So once center markers and magnet targets are set up for all of your symbols, we're ready to move on to the next stage. Before we get into the next stage, I want to show off exactly what kind of skeleton we're going to be setting up. This is going to be a 16 bone humanoid rig. You can see here the different parts that will be represented by that rig. You can access this window by going to Window, Extensions, Smart Magnet Rig. Now that we know what kind of skeleton we're building, we're going to go ahead and draw out the skeleton using the connection editor. So you notice that there are kind of three modes of this connection editor. There's the node creator, there's the move tool, and there's the tag tool. So we're going to use the node creator to draw out our 16 node skeleton. And I try to make the skeleton look like the three quarter pose.
All right, now that that skeleton's all drawn out, the next step is going to be to associate each of the symbols with each of those notes. And we're going to want to be in tag mode to get that to happen. So the first thing we want to do is to select the symbol on the stage and then to select the appropriate node in the connection editor. If everything is working right with our center markers and our magnet targets, then you'll get a very satisfying change in the artwork in the connection editor. There's actually no feedback when it's done right. This process of the rigging is actually very forgiving. So don't stress or worry if you've forgotten a step or if there is an error with if the center marker or the magnet target's not aligned. Um, it's actually very easy to go back in and make those updates as you'll see here. So we'll zoom in, we'll go into wireframe mode, double click to get inside of the symbol. One note, on most humanoid rigs, on a simple limb, you'll have one center marker and one magnet target. The chest is going to be home to a bunch of center markers, right? When they're placed originally inside of the chest symbol, it's not really clear where that is going to connect to the arm or to the rather to the shoulder or to the neck. More than likely, if during the rigging process, you're going to get an error that says, hey, this the center marker is not, we can't find it. It's going to be most likely because the alignment is not so great. You get that feedback. Just go ahead and go into the symbol, edit it, go into wireframe mode. And it's a pretty simple task of aligning those magnet targets and the center markers. So now that the connections are all set, we can test the rig. So this is a very simple motion test, uh, almost a formality because the, um, the rig is pretty uh, intuitive to set up. So now I'm just going to put it through a few of its paces and check and make sure the connections are solid. So now that we know that the rig is set up properly, now it's time for the really fun part, and that is to add IK effectors to the rig. Select two symbols that we want IK effectors to handle, and you can either press Shift F1, or you can smack the IK effectors button in the toolbar. Now one thing to keep in mind, in the case of this rig here, the legs are going to bend backwards, and it's really gross. So what we want to do before we start moving them is we'll want to select the IK effectors individually and hit H on the keyboard to flip them horizontally. You want to do that or you're going to see something really kind of weird. You now have FK with hard rotation, FK with soft rotation, and IK built right in to those pins. Now there's another really cool thing that happens. The IK effectors also act as constraints or as pins. Whenever there are IK constraints on the character, if you manipulate the root of the character using shift and drag, you'll get reverse IK. And reverse IK is this effect where instead of the children influencing the parents, now the parents are going to move towards the children or away from the children, and the children won't move reverse IK. You can use shift and drag to drag your IK effectors to the children, the, the child bones that you want to affect. And if you want to remove those IK effectors and remove their influences from your rig, you just shift and drag them off of those bones. Super crazy easy. So not only does the IK effector serve to, to work as a constraint to, to lock the child into place if you're moving the parent towards and away from the child, but you can also just remove it altogether and go back to a kind of a standard rig. 
Really, really super cool. So part of the action of, of adding or removing the influence of these IK constraints from a child bone is when you shift drag them away, they'll be grayed out, which indicates that they're not really working. And then when you shift drag them towards the child bone, uh, you'll see a green box appear around whichever symbol is going to be affected or by those IK effectors. When you're using a, a rigged character to bring your characters to life, you will have to use the right tool for the right job. There's a lot of animation footage that you'll get, you know, walks, runs, you know, having the character sit, stand, talk. There is a lot of animation footage that's easy to create using that style of rig. But a single rig is only going to get you so far. However, there's so much animation footage that you can get out of a three-quarter front rig that it's well worth looking into. Do be sure to check out the documentation on this tool. When the tool it comes out of beta, the documentation and the support and the videos that go along with the tool will certainly answer any questions that you may have. Adobe is doing something with IK and Bones. But my goodness, it is far behind. But this tool right here catches Animate CC right up and competes with the best of them. Please get the word out about this plugin. A plugin like this could really bring Animate CC back into the spotlight as an animation tool of choice. Hope you like this video. I'll see you again next time.